if our ultimate foundation or starting point hasn't been decided upon tonight, the choice is very simple. Our ultimate foundation and starting point in our thinking is either God or it's the finite self. It is the I. Now, very quickly, there was a Scottish empiricist philosopher called David Hume, and he argued that all we have are sense perceptions. That's what a human being is, he says, a bundle of sensations. He says there's no evidence for God, there's no evidence for the material world. Didn't even believe you could prove causality. Indeed, you can't, not directly. Now, this kind of belief is still with us. One of the dominant views during the 20th century in physics was that held by Ernst Mach. And he developed a whole, in fact, a whole, he had a whole following of scientists and philosophers. He's responsible for the Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3, Mach 4, the speed of sound. He didn't believe that atoms existed. He thought they were useful fictions. And a whole school of philosophers and scientists followed him in that. For Kant, for Immanuel Kant, who followed, the world was relative to the mind. He followed Hume, and he says, we don't know things in themselves as they really are out there. We don't know what the world really is. We only know how it appears to us. But he tried to come up with a way of rationalizing the world based on enlightenment thinking. So he, he, he sought to come up with a necessary set of conditions to know the phenomenal world, the world of our experience, but they were all based on enlightenment rationalism, Euclidean geometry, Newtonian physics, stuff that is now outdated. Honest atheists see, have seen the implications of this and they have identified the mood of our time as existentialism. And the existentialists have said, like Sartre, we are a bubble on an ocean of nothingness. Nothing can be known. It's a good question is to ask, how does he know nothing can be known? For me, as a Christian, on one side of this discussion, I begin with the sovereign God who is foundational to all things, my ultimate foundation. God is the source of all possibility and therefore all true knowledge. The question is, how can you have valid knowledge of anything in a universe not governed by God? That's my question. It's the basic question of epistemology. Episteme, meaning knowledge and, uh, and uh, logos, theory of knowledge. Is knowledge possible? You might say, well, I know what I know. But philosophers for a long time, skeptics, have pointed out that if you begin with your finite self, say, I'm ultimate, I'm my final point of reference, the I is ultimately all you can know. How do you know anything more than that? The threat is what we call solipsism. That is, if there's no God and it's just your mind, the I, the self, how can you know that anything is real or true outside of your own imagination, your own mind? If man then denies God and makes himself ultimate in the universe, he is unable finally to know anything but himself. He dispenses with God, and when he does, he dispenses with a knowable universe. Today, the majority of philosophers, the majority of the philosophical tradition, would not come out for this debate tonight, because they think debate is pointless. Philosophy has become exhausted by this basic question of how we can know things. Many philosophers will simply not bother coming out to any such debate, because they say, well, really, we're just down to pragmatics now. Whatever gives you a sense of control, whatever makes life work for you, do that. We've all heard that, haven't we? If it works for you, do it. Oh, Jesus works for you. I go to the gym. You do Jesus, I do yoga. <laughs> because they're thought to be equivalent statements. Because you can't really know. This is what is thought. In other words, we've been imprisoned in meanings rather than meaning. We call it post-modernity. We've given up the idea of accurate description, that is, non-theists have. With an impersonal universe and no God, there is no absolute context. That is, tonight, by what criterion are you going to judge who's right? What is your basis for judgment? By what criterion do you measure how one collection of atoms over here and another collection of atoms over here is right or wrong what arguments are valid or invalid. Unless you can know about every atom from the birth of the universe to the present in exhaustive detail, 
you cannot possibly know whether there is truth or meaning. And so today we have a web of beliefs. The modern tradition in Wittgenstein don't even believe there's meaning in words anymore. But basically, the meaning is the use. It's just pointless. Just words. Just, this is just words tonight. All there is are sound vibrations hitting your head. That's all. In your ears. It doesn't mean anything more than that. And so my whole argument today is that my God is necessary to have an intelligible, meaningful world because all facts are derivative. God is the source of all possibility. Original chance destroys the pot possibility of knowledge and all meaning becomes a social construct. You have your meaning, I'll have my meaning, he can have his, she can have hers. In fact, honest atheists like Albert Camus have held that we live in an absurd and meaningless world surrounded by a horde of irrationals. The Christian position, however, is that the absolute creator God, or the theistic position, has given us his word, ultimately, in Jesus Christ, and that God knows all facts and is therefore alone able to interpret reality authoritatively. Here's my key argument this evening. There's two views being presented tonight. In anti-theism, we have the basic idea of the brute fact. Let me define that for you, the brute fact. Theists, non-theists I should say, will not permit that the universe, including you and me, is already structural in nature. There is no essence. You might have being, but there's no essence. Because there is no personal God and no eternal plan. Assume for a moment that uh, Christopher's position is right tonight, the chance is ultimate. There's no plan, no structure, no will, no ultimate purpose. Human beings are of necessity when they come to the world, when they come to look at the world, they are rationalizing it for the first time in a completely original fashion. Think about that. This world has no original plan, no design plan, no purpose. No original meaning. So that when you come to the world, you are in an original way and for you, rationalizing it for the first time, trying to give it some kind of structure. By definition, this structure can only be for you. Doesn't matter what really Christopher says tonight, the structure that he gives the universe is only for him. Because there's no God, there's no plan. These facts are irrational by definition. They're not previously arranged or related or ordained by God. There's no plan. Clearly, the structure can only be for the individual. In other words, the existentialist tradition is right in holding that what is given to us without God is the non-rational world, and human beings have the burden of trying to rationalize the irrational. What appears to be rationally related is only so because you have so rationalized it. In other words, whatever has not come into contact with the human mind is wholly non-structural or non-rational in character. Now, this is a belief. This is a religious conviction, friends. It is a religious conviction to believe that this world is without original design plan and structure, and you are confronted with a horde of irrationals. Consequently, there is no neutral approach to knowledge. We either think in terms of God, as the ultimate source, or we invent a meaning for ourselves. This is the problem for the non-theist. How can a brute fact be anything more ever than a brute fact? You see, my worldview, my belief holds that history and nature are governed by God who ordained and created them in a universe of total meaning, so that Jesus could say, every hair on your head is numbered, not a sparrow falls to the ground without my father. Every aspect of your life has a total meaning in terms of the purpose and plan of God. There is a relationship, a pre-established relationship between all facts, and this relationship can be discovered. And that means there is objective meaning. Simply put, all that is known by human beings is already known by God and governed by his providence.